Hello everyone. My name is Rachel. I'm an exercise physiologist at EAMC's Cardiac Rehab. Thank you for joining me today. Today is a fun day. We're going to do risk factors prevention class. So this class goes over what heart disease is, what are the different procedures that our doctors do to help with heart disease, and what you can do to make lifestyle changes and to better your life. The first part of the class, we're going to go through the different procedures, how it relates to your heart, and then the second part of the class, we're going to go through what you can do to make changes to live a healthier life. So thank you for joining me today. I'm going to go through the different slides and we're going to go through especially what you can do risk factor wise to make changes. So our first slide takes us to the risk factors. So when we look at this, I'm going to clear my head from the bottom. There we go. <laughs> when we look at this chart, this talks about what the risk factors for heart disease are. So when we talk about risk factors, that's your higher risk for developing heart disease. And so a lot of factors contribute to developing heart disease. Being overweight, having high cholesterol, your diet, diabetes, high blood pressure, smoking, age, all of these things contribute to heart disease. And some of these we are able to modify, we are able to change, but some we are not. And so if we can make the changes that we need to, knowing that we have family history of heart disease, knowing that we are getting older, but I can control what my diet is and help lower my cholesterol, help lower my blood pressure, not smoke. Those are the things you can do now to make those changes. Whenever you see your doctor, these are great questions to ask anytime you have an appointment. We like to suggest write your questions down before seeing your doctor and bring that list in and always talk to your doctor before stopping any medications. But the best three questions that you can ask in any situation, what is my problem? What do I need to do about it? And why is it important for me to do this? When you ask those questions, you're opening up a dialogue and more communication with your doctor that allow you to better understand your health and how you can better it. So the different risk factors that may not be able to be changed or non-modifiable are age, we get older every year, and family history, our genes. The modifiable risk factors for heart disease stress, tobacco use, blood pressure, so high blood pressure, being overweight, diabetes, high cholesterol, and an inactive lifestyle. And we're going to go through each of these risk factors and talk about how we can change each of them. One of the big causes of heart disease that a lot of people don't realize is stress and having high stress. I like to talk about this often because it affects every one of us. And I believe, especially in today's society, we have a lot more stress now than we used to. And I would even say during these current times, um, this is more true than ever. So there are ways to help reduce your stress and manage them. Exercise is an excellent way. Maybe finding a hobby that you enjoy, meditation, yoga, nature, taking a walk outside, music, time management, prioritizing what is important to help limit your stress, and then also possibly therapy, talking to someone about it and finding out what is the cause of your stress and what you can do to make changes in your life. Tobacco use is another big risk factor for heart disease, and it's one of the most preventable causes of heart disease in the U.S. Smokers are three times more likely to die of heart disease, and it causes a lot of damage in the blood vessels and your heart. You're more likely to have a heart attack, blood clots, strokes, hemorrhage, aneurysms. It decreases your good cholesterol increases your fat levels. It also increases your clotting factors and it damages the lining of your blood vessels. 
this is any tobacco product as well. So cigarette smoking, the inhalation or vaping of nicotine will cause a lot of damage, but so can the nicotine product in dip and in other tobacco products. High blood pressure is what we call a silent killer. And we've talked about before how the high blood pressure makes your heart have to work that much harder. So coronary artery disease and atherosclerosis will be showing through high blood pressure. It can lead to heart failure, thickening of the heart muscle. It can lead to kidney disease and stroke. So keeping your blood pressure in a normal range, we like to make a goal of 120 over 80 and possibly lower if we can get to 110 over 70. But now they have diagnosed hypertension at 130 over 90. So we realize that the higher our blood pressure, the more damage we can cause to our heart. To manage your blood pressure, it will be helpful to maintain a healthy weight, increase physical activity, watch your salt and sodium intake, eat healthy foods, drink alcoholic beverages in moderation if you drink at all, and take medications as prescribed. Being overweight will also cause a risk factor for developing heart disease. So we can look at body mass index or your height over your weight, or we can look at your waist measurement. And this is an easy way for anyone to know if they're in this category. Men, if you have a waist measurement at the belly button of 40 inches or less, you're less likely to develop heart disease. But if you have more than 40 inches at the belly button area, then you're more likely to develop heart disease. Women, we have it a little smaller, unfortunately, but for 35 inches or less, that is a healthy range for your waist measurement. An unhealthy range would be over 35 inches. So when we measure, we usually measure around the belly button area, all the way around. So we're not looking at the pant size, gentlemen. We're actually looking at where it is near that belly button. Diabetes is very related to heart disease. And this is where a lot of people get confused. Um, if you do have diabetes, it's very important to check your blood pressure as often as possible. Exercise often and take your medications as prescribed. A goal for those that do have diabetes for their A1C would be 6.5 to 7%. Your A1C is pretty much a summary of what your blood sugar's been recently, and it shows in a percent value. So that would be equivalent to having maybe a blood sugar goal of a fasting glucose 80 to 120 daily. So when you're checking your blood sugar, we want it in that healthy range. Now, you want to also watch the carbs that you eat during the day. So men, you want 60 grams of carbs per meal. Women, 45 grams of carbs per meal. And for your snacks, you don't want to go over 15 grams of carbs. When we're looking at cholesterol, that's what helps build the plaque in your arteries. And so if we have lower cholesterol, the less likely you have plaque buildup. The higher the cholesterol, the more likely you're getting that atherosclerosis buildup. The high number that we want to lower especially is the LDL. The LDL we like to call lousy, and the HDL, we want it actually higher. We want that up. So LDL lousy, HDL healthy. That's an easy way to remember which ones you want higher and which ones you want lower. I like to think of the HDL to be like a car taking passengers. And the more passengers you have and the more people in the streets, the more likely you're gonna have an accident. But if you have enough cars to transport those people, the less likely you're gonna have an accident. And then triglycerides are the fat or that fat content in the blood, and that's what can also contribute to atherosclerosis. So these are some 
easy ways, simple goals to help better your nutrition. So the first one, we want to eat more fruits and vegetables. And we want to get all the nutrients from other foods versus vitamins. So if you can get more of your nutrients from healthy, fresh fruits and vegetables, then that's a better way to digest and absorb those nutrients. If you do have to buy canned foods, try to go for the lower sodium or no salt added options and rinse with water before eating. Um, you can also buy fresh or frozen fruits and vegetables. My mom used to tell me to try to pick five different colors for your fruits and vegetables for the day, and that's a great way to get different nutrients and vitamins that you need from them. Fruits and vegetables also are higher in fiber, which help clean your gut and help not higher, um, get your carbohydrate count higher. It actually helps reduce your carbohydrate intake. Eat more whole grain foods. So instead of going for the simple sugars that are white sugars, you're gonna go for the whole wheat, which has higher fiber in it. So instead of white rice, go for brown rice. Maybe instead of corn flakes, go for bran flakes or even old fashioned oatmeal. Um, there, so there's a lot of choices that you can make. And especially instead of going for the white bread or wheat bread, go for the whole wheat bread. There's a lot of honey wheats and, and different versions of wheat bread, but we really wanna target the whole wheat with the high fiber. It helps lower your cholesterol, it makes you feel full, and it also prevents constipation. So overall, those are the healthier grain choices. You want to use healthier fat options, so olive oil or canola oil versus your um, vegetable oil versus your butter and versus any type of lard products. So if it's solid at room temperature, it's gonna be higher saturated fats and we wanna completely avoid trans fats or hydrogenated fats, so that's your fried foods and baked goods. We want to have good fats that can lower your lousy cholesterol, the LDL, and that would be monosaturated or polyunsaturated. So some suggestions, try to grill, saute, stir fry, or bake your foods. You can make your own salad dressing with olive oil, use liquid margarine, or use low-fat dairy products. And here are some other good tips. Um, instead of lard, try to use more corn oil. Instead of tropical oils like coconut, try to go for maybe some sunflower oil. You wanna eat more lean meats. So that includes chicken, turkey, fish, beans, versus your red meats that are higher in saturated fat. Unsaturated fats and omega-3 fatty acids in fish have tremendous health benefits and can actually reduce your risk for heart disease. Try to prepare your beans without saturated and trans fats. And then have protein substitutes like beans, unsalted nuts, or low-fat dairy foods and shellfish to get the protein that you need. The next helpful hint, limit your sodium or salt intake. So if you ever hear sodium, that means salt. And we wanna have a goal of 1,500 to 2,300 milligrams per day. It's good to talk to your doctor to see where your limit would be based on the strength of your heart. The weaker our heart, the more likely we're sensitive to salt and we may need to do a lower amount. Try to limit your canned goods and rinse with water before using. Choose low sodium options. Use herbs, spices, vinegar, or lemon when cooking. Limit things that are high in salt, like pickles, steak sauce, olives. Take the salt shaker off that table and try to use substitutes like Mrs. Dash to help limit your salt intake. Americans have been shown to eat close to four to 5,000 milligrams per salt. And I will say only one teaspoon of salt is already over our daily limit. 2,400 milligrams. So think about that when you are adding salt to your meals. And read your food labels to help make healthier choices. So the main areas that we like to look at are your serving size first. Always start there to may have to do the math to figure out what the total amount of calories, of fat, of cholesterol is in this product. 
check for your saturated fats, trans fats, sodium, carbohydrates, and make sure you get enough of fiber, protein, and vitamins. You can use the daily percent guide, but most likely it's gonna be helpful to use the grams and see what you need to do per day. And they've recently changed the way labels look to make it easier to read. So again, the serving sizes are larger and bolder. Your calories are much larger now. And the sodium, carbohydrate, and protein and fat section are all showing in a bigger way. This would be an appropriate plate to make for your meals. So we want to have a protein, a vegetable, fruit, grain, and dairy. And this is a whole meal that helps give us all the nutrients that we need. Portion size is especially important. And this slide actually makes me a little sad looking at it, but it's true. We need to limit the amount of food that we eat and look at our portion sizes, what is appropriate to eat. One of the ones that sticks out to me more than anything is a stick of butter. I look at this right over here and I see, oh my goodness, butter can only be the size of a postage stamp. So think about that when you're cooking and you're baking and how much you are eating of these different products. Um, peanut butter can be the size of a golf ball. We look at pasta and see that it should be the size of an ice cream scoop. When you go to any type of Italian restaurant, they're giving you way more than that. So again, portion control is important and it doesn't mean you can't enjoy your food and eat things you enjoy, but think about how much you're eating and try to balance it with healthier fiber foods and healthier options. And my favorite part for help reducing your risk for heart disease, exercise. It makes you feel good, it, you feel so much better, and it also helps improve your immune system, it helps your heart get stronger, and it helps your overall health and well-being. Um, so exercise is excellent for everybody. We want to make a goal of 150 minutes per week, and if we can do more, that's excellent. Aerobic exercise is good for your heart. Strengthening exercise or resistance exercise is great for your muscle condition and building muscle. And then we also want to think about balance, coordination, and flexibility. Sometimes we try to think of starting an exercise program, but we don't know how. So the first thing is to set an initial goal. So start small, maybe trying to walk at least three days a week, and then you can add more as you go along. Set an activity goal that you like to think too. So if you enjoy walking and taking a walk outside, plan at least three days this week that you know you're gonna take a walk outside. And then also choose an activity that you enjoy and something that you want to do. If you're not a fan of walking, but you love to dance, look up videos on what cardio dance classes are out there. Um, there are great websites and great channels on YouTube that you could find, and you can enjoy it in your own household. And you wanna make smart goals. Now that doesn't mean we make silly goals, <laughs> but SMART is an acronym to follow your goals and make them more achievable. So we wanna make it specific. Do you set with real numbers and real deadlines? Measurable, can you track your goal? Attainable, is it challenging but possible? Realistic, so being honest with yourself of what you're capable of. And time bound, give yourself a deadline. And if you meet all the criteria in the SMART goal, you're more likely to achieve a goal and stick with it. So here are some fun exercise challenges you can do. You can break up activities. So if you're watching TV, every 30 minutes at the or even at the commercials, try to get up and move. Um, you can switch between exercises. So maybe one day you wanna do some lifting and the next day you wanna go for a walk. Uh, maybe go on a new route. Or if you wanna make it social, you can social distance right now with maybe family members in your household or use apps to help challenge family and friends, and y'all can compare who's out walking who. And then you could also try different activities, maybe water activities, 
Um, and then, you know, think about what you can start out now and what your level is now and how you can progress. Of course, always talk to your doctor before starting an exercise routine. These are some local places that you can exercise in the Auburn Opelika area. So we do have a lot of tracks and trails nearby and we should have some fitness facilities opening back soon. Um, we know we're social distancing at this time, but these are some great resources to look at and see what you would like to enjoy and what they offer for you. We do have a Mended Heart support group that meets monthly. Right now we are social distancing, but you can contact the coordinator for this group. This is David Nordis, and his phone number is below, but a support group may be helpful for those that have developed heart disease or the caregivers that are helping their, their loved ones and they want to have emotional support and to find people that have a similar story to them or may want to hear different experiences. So we really recommend maybe joining a support group to help manage your stress and work through this period of healing and recovery. Again, I work at Cardiac Rehab of EAMC, and we have an exercise program for our patients that have recently had heart attacks, heart surgery, stents, angioplasties, and heart failure. It's covered by most insurances, and our contact information is below. Our phone number is 334-528-1694. Thank you so much for watching this video and participating in our risk factors prevention class. We really appreciate you joining us at this time. If you are interested in cardiac rehab, come join the fun. And again, our phone number is 334-528-1694. And we'll be happy to get in contact with you and see if you qualify for cardiac rehab. Again, thank you at this time for social distancing. We appreciate you watching this and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.